I had my near-death experience in April of 2001. I was 22 years old at the time and working for a company making prefab walls for contractors. At the company I worked for, if we made the linear footage quota for the day, we could clock out early and still get paid for a full day. While we did not always manage to make quota, this day we had, and as I drove home I couldn't help but think of how beautiful the day was. In fact, I would have called it perfect. The weather was just right for me to grab my fishing pole and get in some fishing before dinner. Fishing is what I enjoyed most at that stage in my life, and after not being able to cast a line all winter, I felt it was overdue. I was still about five miles away from my home when I felt my car lurch suddenly, and I lost the ability to steer. The car spun across the highway and into the path of a pickup truck. This all seemed to be happening in slow motion, and my brain effectively calculated the coming impact. I remember thinking, God help me, as I was struck and sent flipping over an embankment before my car came to rest against a rather large tree. Now the pain took over as I tried to free myself from the wreck. The other driver quickly raced to me and instructed me to stay put. He had called 911. I can remember struggling to breathe in blood, trickling from a gash in my head down into my eyes, and as much as I wanted to wipe it away, not being able to raise my arms to do so. After what seemed like a long time, a fire truck arrived and the firemen began using the jaws of life to cut me free. I remember the lady in the ambulance telling me, I hope you don't like this shirt, as she began cutting it off me. At the hospital I was rushed into surgery. The last thing I can recall was the anesthesiologist telling me to relax. Everything was going to be all right. The next thing I knew I heard a loud pop sound. Suddenly I was standing next to the operating table watching the surgeon working on my broken body. At that point all pain ceased to exist. I watched as the surgeon called for the paddles. Everyone in the operating room was moving with a sense of extreme urgency while I watched peacefully from the sidelines. Just then I was transported into what I can only describe as an endless sea of white nothingness. It felt like a room, yet there were no walls, no ceiling, and no floor. Everything was the whitest white I had ever seen, and a warm peaceful feeling seemed to fill my entire being. Looking around I could see nobody else. At this point I am not entirely sure I even had a body anymore. I don't know how long I was in this white room, for lack of a better term. I only know it seemed like a really long time. Suddenly a door appeared, and my first thought was where did that come from, and why did I not notice it before? The door opened, and in walked a woman. I will not say an angel because I do not think that is what she was due to the lack of wings. Where am I? I asked. You are where souls come to wait, she replied. Wait for what exactly? She smiled and answered souls that arrive early often have to wait while he decides what to do with them. Does this mean I'm dead? I asked. Souls do not die. Think of it as a transitioning phase. From here some souls move on and some are sent back to accomplish their life's mission. What about me? Will I be moving on? That is for the father to decide, she stated. She then said, come with me, and walked back through the door she had entered. As I stepped through the door, I saw a glimpse of the most amazing landscape I have ever seen. I saw grass greener than any on this plane of existence. I saw a sky bluer than blue. I saw people, all seemed happy and at peace. The lady led me to a table where I was told to have a seat. As I was sitting there in awe of the absolute beauty of this place, a man approached me. He was dressed in a white robe with golden accents. When this man reached me, he said, My father has decided it is not your time and you still have much to do. You will be sent back. I asked this man, who I now assume was Jesus, although he did not tell me his name, why I had to go back. He smiled at me and explained that we all have a part to play in the plans of the father and no part is insignificant. Everything I had yet to do on earth would have a ripple effect on the lives of many, many more people. If I were allowed to stay there now, it would affect too many lives. 
He then stated that when it was my time, I would be returning to stay, and until then I needed only know that he was always with me, especially when times were toughest. I would like to say I had a life review or saw a deceased relative, but that did not happen. The man stood and walked away, and suddenly I heard that pop sound again. I was back in my body. The next day the surgeon came by my room to check up on me. He said that I gave them quite a scare as I had flatlined during the operation. I asked him how long I had been dead for and was surprised when he told me it had been for 1 minute and 37 seconds. It sure seemed a lot longer to me. My total damage from the wreck was a broken wrist, a broken arm, one punctured lung, one shattered tibia, a gash to my head, and an on-the-table heart failure. Years later my wrist still bothers me when it rains. At first, I told my near-death experience to several close friends and family only to be given strange looks or be told that it was the medication the doctors had me on making me hallucinate. My own sister even tried scheduling me an appointment with a psychiatrist. At the end of the day, I know what I experienced and I look forward to accomplishing whatever part I am supposed to accomplish in the plans of the father so I may return to the other side, this time to stay.